Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about solution dilution. Now, if you spend too much money at Starbucks, like I do, you might have seen this process. Solution dilution is just adding some liquid to something to make it less concentrated. And so, when you make a latte, which is a mixture of milk and espresso, the very first step is your barista makes some espresso, which is this thick black drink that is really, really concentrated coffee and caffeine. And if you drink that straight, it's not very tasty. So the way you make it tasty is you add milk to it, diluting the coffee, and you get out your latte, and it's much tastier. Now, the espresso has a high concentration of caffeine. Your latte has a lower concentration of caffeine because we've added milk to it. So you might ask yourself, if you're a chemistry geek, how could I calculate the concentration of caffeine in my latte? from the concentration of caffeine in my espresso. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna talk about how you can calculate a new concentration after you've diluted something. And remember, diluted just means to add liquid to something to make it less concentrated. You also do this if you make an alcoholic mixed drink, right? If you have whiskey and you add soda to it to make it less concentrated, you're diluting it. So solution dilution happens all the time. It's just making something less concentrated. Okay, so how can we go about this process of calculating the new concentration of caffeine? Well, what you think about here is you need to know the volume of the espresso, the volume of your milk, and you also need to know the concentration of caffeine in your espresso. And I've given you all those variables here, right? So it says the molarity of caffeine in a 50 milliliter shot of espresso, so there's the volume, is about 0.008 molar. Now, if you're not sure what molarity is, go ahead and check out my video on molarity and then come back to this one. Then it adds, what is the new molarity after you add 100 milliliters of milk? So, how do you even go about this sort of calculation? Well, it turns out there's a handy equation that is mi times vi equals mf times vf. What does all that mean? That basically means take your initial molarity, the concentration you start with, multiply by your initial volume, the volume you start with. And that's going to be equal to the final molarity, your final concentration, times your final volume. You may also see this equation as M1V1 equals M2V2. Same thing. Now, to give you a picture of what this looks like, because right now you might be trying to picture what's going on, not too easy, here is an unmixed latte. Up top, we got espresso, 50 milliliters of it, at 0 0.008 molar. That's the concentration of caffeine. And on the bottom, we have 100 milliliters of milk. And what we know is when I take that spoon and I stir that latte, what's going to be my new concentration of caffeine in that drink? And the way we're going to go about this is we're just going to try to identify each of the variables in this equation and then go ahead and plug it in. So what's our initial volume? Well, as listed here, it says the molarity of caffeine in a 50 milliliter shot of espresso is 0.08 molar, that's telling us our initial volume. We start with 50 milliliters of espresso, and then we add milk to it. So our, our initial volume, our VI, is 50 milliliters. What's our initial molarity? Well, our initial molarity is that molarity of caffeine and espresso, which is 0.008. Now, we know our final volume, but here's where you might make a mistake. You might say like, oh, I see 100 milliliters there. That's our final volume. But remember, when we stir this guy up, we're going to have our espresso there and our milk. So to get our final volume, we really have to add those two volumes together. So if you add those two volumes together, you'll see that our final volume is going to be 150 milliliters. The final volume is the volume you have all together with all that stuff you're mixing. So our volume final is not 100 milliliters, that's the volume of our milk. It's 150 milliliters, the total volume of our latte. And what we want to know is the molarity after we add that milk. So we want to know the new molarity. So our unknown is molarity final. That's what we don't know. So now we have three variables in that equation and we don't know one, so we can just use some algebra and we can solve that. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our equation, mi vi, I'm sorry, yeah, vi equals mf vf. And if we want to get that new molarity, that final molarity by itself, all we got to do is divide by our final volume. So once we divide by our final volume, we'll get our new equation. 
That's going to cancel out vinyl volume on this side. And we're going to get our new expression, which is just the molarity initial times the volume initial divided by the volume final is equal to our molarity final. And now all we have to do is plug in our variables and we can calculate that new molarity, how concentrated that caffeine is in our latte. So our initial molarity was 0 0.008. And we're going to multiply that by our volume initial, 50 milliliters. And we're going to divide that by our final volume, 150 milliliters. Now, when we do all that math, we're going to get out 0 0.003 molar. A few notes here. That is the concentration of caffeine in our latte after we've mixed it up. Now, you notice that I just went ahead and used the volume in milliliters. You can use any units of volume you want with this equation. The only trick is you got to use the same unit for volume on both sides and the same unit for molarity on both sides or the same unit for concentration. So here we get out 0 0.003 molar. And that is the concentration of caffeine in our latte once we've diluted it with milk. Let's take a look at an example of a problem that's more chemistry-like. So in this problem, we're told that a 20 milliliter solution of sugar with a concentration of one molar is diluted to 120 milliliters. And we wanna know what is that new concentration. So the first thing we're gonna do here, now I've broken this process down into a few steps, is just identify our unknown. And the question tells us, what is the new concentration? And so we want to know the new concentration. That's our final molarity. So that's what we're looking for in this case. Molarity final. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and identify and determine the other volumes of molarities that we know. So what is our molarity initial? What's our volume initial? And what is our final volume? That's what we want to identify now. And we can see that it tells us our initial volume directly. A 20 milliliter solution of sugar with a concentration of one molar is diluted. So that means that is our initial volume, 20 milliliters. Now, it also tells us our molarity initial. We know that our molarity initial is one molar right here. It also directly in this case tells us our final volume. There's a key difference here between this problem and the last problem. In this problem, it tells us that the solution is diluted to 120 milliliters. And that language indicates that the final volume is actually 120 milliliters. When it says on the other hand that I add 100 milliliters to my solution, well that means we need to do the same thing we did in the previous problem. In this case, we're just given our final volume. We're diluting it all the way up to 120 milliliters, and that makes it our final volume. So now all we got to do is rearrange our equation for our unknown and plug our stuff in and calculate it. So we're on step three. So this looks the same as the last problem where once we rearrange it, we'll have volume initial times molarity initial divided by our final volume. And that's how the equation's always going to look when we're solving for molarity final. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in our numbers. Our volume initial in this case is 20 milliliters. And our volume initial, or our molarity initial, I'm sorry, is one molar. And we're going to divide that by our final volume, which is 120 milliliters. So when we do that math, we'll get out 0 0.2 molar. That's with one sig fig. You notice that the concentration went down. It was one molar and now it's 0.2 molars. The concentration should always go down when you're diluting it because you're adding something to it that is making it less concentrated. You can imagine adding your clear water to your Kool-Aid and your Kool-Aid is going to get lighter and lighter color. It should always get less concentrated. Okay, let's do one more problem type with the solution dilution equation. This is, if you think about it, the type of problem you often face in the chemistry lab where you want to prepare a solution and we can use our molarity equation to come up with how to prepare it. Let me show you what I mean. It says a stock solution of HCl, which turns out to be hydrochloric acid, has a concentration of 12 molar. And when you get a shipment of HCl in from the chemical store, it will just be really, really concentrated. They don't ship it with much water. It's cheaper that way. 
And so lots of times in the lab, you want to prepare something with a lower concentration. So it asks, how much of the stock solution do we need to make a one liter solution of HCl with a concentration of one molar? So you can see this problem is asking for slightly different information. But you can also see a bunch of molarities floating around and some volumes floating around. And that's always a good hint that what you're dealing with is a solution dilution problem. So the first thing we want to do is identify our unknown. We know it has to be molarity initial, volume initial, or molarity final, or volume final. In this case, we're told that we have a, a stock solution with a concentration of 12 molar. That turns out to be our molarity initial. And it, it asks how much of this stock solution is needed. So what we're looking for in this case is actually our volume initial. That is, what volume do we need to take out of the stock solution to dilute, to make ourselves a one molar solution of HCl? And now we're going to go ahead and identify our other unknowns. And so, in this case, we see that we're given directly the initial volume, or I'm sorry, the initial concentration. So that's the molarity initial. And then we know that eventually we want to get to a one liter solution. Now that's the total volume we want to end up with. And so that's our volume final. Then we know that the concentration we want the solution to have eventually is one molar. And that makes that our molarity final. So we've identified three of the variables in our equation. We've also identified what we want to find. And now we're to step three, where we just need to rearrange this equation and plug stuff in. So we start off with M1, V1, or I'm sorry, M initial, volume uh, initial, is equal to molarity final, volume final. And now we're solving for a different variable. We want volume initial. And so that means what we're going to do is we're going to divide by molarity initial on both sides. And that's going to cancel out our molarity as initial and leave us with volume initial is equal to molarity final times volume final divided by molarity initial. So let's plug those numbers in. The final molarity we want is 1.0 molar. The final volume we want is 1 liter. And we know that our initial molarity was 12 molar. So when we do that math, we're going to be solving for our volume initial. And that's going to give us 0 0.083 liters. Now, since the volume we put into there was in liters, that means the volume we get out here is in liters, right? We put in our volume final in liters, and that's going to make our volume initial in liters. And that tells us how much volume of our stock solution we need to make a one liter solution at one molar. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions about how to do solution dilution problems, please ask them below. Uh, also, please subscribe if you enjoy these videos and you can get updates about new videos I make. Thanks for watching.